Hello everyone, Aleswith here. Welcome to the 1K subscriber special. As promised, I'm going to be answering the questions you all submitted. Um, we're going to do the questions from the YouTube comments first, then move over to the Twitter questions. If I butcher your name or username, I sincerely apologize. Please feel free to correct my pronunciation in the comments section so I can get it right next time. Without further ado, let's get started. Sin VA says, congrats again. Oh, thank you, bud. Why did you choose Aleswith as your VA name? Pretty sure many asked already, but I still don't know. Um, so Aleswith is a pseudonym that I have used for a while now, probably three years. Um, I initially first heard it on a TV show called The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Um, the, the character Aleswith in the show is King Alfred's wife, and she's not painted in a particularly flattering light, but for whatever reason, after I first heard her name, I couldn't get it out of my head. I could not tell you why. <laughs> it was just there. So um, one day I ended up Googling the real Aleswith, and I was kind of shocked to discover that we don't know very much about her. Um, we know who she was married to, we know who her parents were, and we know who her kids were. Other than that, we know very little about this woman's accomplishments, personality, anything. Um, and that just, I don't know, for some reason that really depressed me. <laughs> so, um, since I couldn't get her name out of my head and I was sad that she didn't have much recognition, I decided to just start using her name for stuff. Um, I spell it differently because for whatever reason, I struggled with the original spelling. Um, so the spelling is my own brainchild, but I was using it for um, lots of stuff. I use it for my OCs when I haven't figured out their actual name yet. I have one OC that actually does go by Aleswith. I use the name for my ESO character and I've used it in gamer tags in the past. So when I started the channel, using Aleswith as my moniker was a no-brainer and it came to me very easily. The next question is from Joel. It says, congrats on 1k subs, truly deserved. Your stories are top tier. Oh gosh, thank you so much. Um, how did you come up with your name? As I said, um, heard the name Elswith, it stuck in my head and I started using it as a moniker long before I started the channel, so it was easy for me to pick up. Um, how long does it take to write up a story? That really depends. Um, some of my stories, I get this wild hair and I plunk them out in an hour. Others I have an idea for and I'll make some bullet points and I agonize over it for weeks at a time. So it really just kind of depends day to day. I would say for the actual amount of work I put into writing a script, actually sitting in front of my computer not counting snack breaks is probably three hours to write one and go through and revise it. Um, but that's just the average. Um, let's see, your favorite character that you made so far. Uh, gosh. So far, I think it would be Andromeda, or Andy, the space captain. I love that she's always got something sassy to say, and uh, she's just kind of long-suffering <laughs> with everyone around her. Um, she kind of says whatever comes to her mind, and I love that about her. You're gonna get to find out a lot more of her personality as we go along, but so far she has been my favorite to write for. Kirsten Kuhner says, congratulations. I'm so proud of you and all of the hard work you've put into this channel. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Your support is so meaningful to me. I appreciate that so much. Here's my question. Where do you find the inspiration for your videos? The answer is anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> um, some of my videos are based on novels that I tried and failed to write, so they are half finished. They have anywhere between 1 to 12 chapters finished, so some of my OCs I have pulled from <laughs> those unfinished stories and you're getting them in full force. Other inspiration comes from just the most random things. Um, Orc Girlfriend, for example, came about because <laughs> I overheard a conversation where people were discussing whether it's better to be the big spoon or the little spoon. And in my head, I thought, hmm, you know who's good for Big Spoon? Orc Girlfriend. And I rolled with it. I came home and I wrote up a script about a big, snuggly teddy bear of an Orc Girlfriend, and that's what you guys get. So yeah, anywhere I can get inspiration, I will take it. Yopsa says, congrats on 1K. Keep doing you and never give up. Much love from the PH. Aw, thank you so much. 
Question, how's life this past year? Like, what's your experience during the pandemic? Um, I, I really can't complain, to be honest with you. Throughout this whole thing, I have maintained my health and my income, and so have all the people in my immediate circle, so I feel very, very lucky in that regard. Um, of course, there's the inconvenience of things being closed down and people being stressed. I know my workload at my actual job has increased a great deal thanks to COVID, but overall, I really can't complain. Um, I've always kind of been a hermit, so being told to stay home <laughs> really didn't hurt me that much. Um, I'm ashamed to say I, I really wasn't that bothered with that mandate, so... Overall, I'm I'm doing pretty well. I appreciate you asking, though. I hope you've been doing well. Bullet point says, where's that Patreon? <laughs> I am flattered, firstly, that you would ask. Um, that means a lot. Um, Patreon is not something immediately on the horizon for me. Um, just because my IRL job is pretty demanding, and I know that right now I would not be able to give a Patreon the amount of attention that it would deserve. Um, right now I'm doing one audio a week and I would really want to be able to do like two plus some kind of special content for my patrons. So that is a back burner thing that I really do hope I can get to someday, but right now it's not quite in my immediate future. So we will see what happens after a few months here. Moving over to the Twitter questions now. Audi the Bilociraptor says, what inspired you to start your channel? Congrats on 1K. Oh, thank you so much. Um, the short answer for this is other VAs and their amazing content have inspired me. The long-winded answer, buckle up, this is going to go on for a while. Um, I had been consuming traditional ASMR content for the better part of probably four or five years. Um, I love just queuing up a video and relaxing and feeling cared for. It's really nice. And late last year, I discovered audio role plays kind of by accident because I was looking for a, don't judge me, Dragon Age ASMR role plays. <laughs> um, the first one I found was the Antivan Crow series by Darian Audio, which hooked me immediately because he sounds just like the Antivan Crow character from Dragon Age. I thought it was a really neat concept to be fully immersed in a story as a listener like that, so I started looking for more. Shortly thereafter, I was on a search for Viking roleplays, and I came across one by Nomad's Tales and Audios, which was actually his first video. Um, and I was again hooked immediately by the depth of the character and the quality of the story. He got an instant subscribe. Overnight, my recommendations changed. <laughs> um, I went through and listened to every single channel that popped up on my feed at that point. So. Through that, I discovered ASMR Gav, Siren Sun ASMR, Redacted ASMR, Joseph Holloway, and Icy Narrates, all of whom I completely binged and who all still heavily inspire me to this day. With every audio I listened to, I got more and more interested in this form of storytelling. I can pinpoint three moments that led me to starting my own channel. Um, the first one, I was on my second listen of ASMR Gaff's Starline series, um, finishing up the final chapter, which is just so good. And um, I thought to myself, oh my god, I wish I could do this. I want to write these compelling characters. I want to tell stories in this fashion. I want to do this so bad. But of course, I didn't act on it. <laughs> but that thought lived kind of rent-free in my head for days. The second moment was about a week later, I was listening to Nomad's 10k Q&A where I learned just how accessible all of it was to me. Um, during that stream, I popped over to his bio and he has a line there that says simply, I like to tell stories. And my brain just kind of blue screened. Like, I like to tell stories too. Is, is that the main qualifier? Is it really that simple? <laughs> and then the third and final moment, through Nomad's channel, I was made aware of Greenbrier Audios, who was the first female VA I listened to. To sum up, Briar delivers amazing performances. I watched every video she had on her channel, and at that point I said, I'm doing this. These people have inspired the crap out of me. I am doing this. Um, I started writing scripts and ordering equipment and learning about the ins and outs of managing a YouTube channel. 
and two weeks from that point, I was releasing my first audio. So I apologize for the story time, but that's the long answer of what inspired me to start up. Renatka VA says, congrats again, dear. Thank you so much, Rena. What TV show do you turn on when you just want to zone out and feel better? Um, generally, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> um, I sometimes mix it up with the IT crowd, but usually Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I find that show to be hysterically funny. If you were held at gunpoint and told that if you didn't impress them with your dance moves, you would be killed, what dance moves would you bust out? I would grab a partner and jump into some old school swing dancing. Um, <laughs> that's probably the best they're going to get. If I'm not allowed to grab a partner, then I guess I'm going to do the Macarena with a prayer on my lips because <laughs> that's, that's what they're going to get. Phantom88VA says, congrats on 1k. Hey, thanks, dude. I appreciate your support. Question time, consoles or gaming PCs? Well, my initial go-to is a gaming PC. Um, I have a custom gaming PC that I built at the end of 2019. It is my workhorse. I play most of my games on it. I love it to pieces. But that said, I do have an Xbox and a PlayStation and a Switch all in my house, and they all do get used. So, so I'm kind of of the mindset that even though I really enjoy PC, I love meeting other people where they're at, and I'm just happy that everyone gets to enjoy games in the way that they want to. So, yeah. Um, if you were in the Navy, would you rather serve on land or on a ship? Hmm. That's an interesting question. My gut reaction says ship. Provided that I could get over my occasional motion sickness, <laughs> if that were not a factor, I would absolutely prefer ship. Gav VA says, congrats again. Now for a dumb one, would you rather have a snake for a tongue or lobster claws for hands? <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, so lobster claws, I feel like would impede my ability to game and to pet dogs, two of my favorite pastimes. So I'm going to have to go with snake for a tongue. That's my answer. Sensei Robert says, what kind of hardware and software do you use to make your audios? Microphone editing program, stuff like that. Um, for hardware, I use a Blue Yeti. Surprise, surprise. There's a reason why it's the most popular one. It's good and it's easy to use out of the box. Um, for my editing laptop, I use a Razorblade Stealth 15, which admittedly is more beefy than is probably necessary for editing audios. But as I said, I'm a gamer, so I like to have portable gaming as well, and I was not going to buy two separate laptops, so all in one. Um, and then of course I have an isolation shield for my mic, a pop filter, and a couple of different types of mic covers, depending on what I'm doing. For software, I use Audacity for my editing, which I'm probably going to be changing up soon, given the recent changes to the policies surrounding Audacity. Not a huge fan of the way that's been played out, so I'm going to use it for now until I find something better. I use GIMP for creating all of my thumbnails, and I use Shotcut for putting my thumbnails and my audios together into one YouTube-friendly format. Um, let's see, Google Docs is what I use for writing and storing all of my scripts, and I also have a subscription to Soundly, which is where I get most of my sound effects from. If I can't find it on Soundly, I just make it myself with objects I have in my house. Uh, question two, would you mind writing a haiku for me? <laughs> uh, please hold. A haiku about YouTube voice actors. With soothing voices and lovingly crafted tales, we help you relax. How'd I do, Sensei? Roland says, for the Q&A, how nervous were you when you recorded your first audio? So my first audio was the big sister gets you hyped for a date. Recording that one was cake because I am a big sister IRL. I have two younger siblings, so I basically just got to be myself for about 10 minutes. Um, it came very easily to me and editing it was a breeze aside from, you know, the learning curve of editing. Um, I was really quite comfortable with it, but 
I will say the nerves kicked in when I went to go hit the publish button on YouTube. Um, I sat there with the mouse hovering over that button for probably a good 10 minutes, just internally freaking out. Um, at one point I made my brain go blank and I clicked it and I promptly walked off to the kitchen to make myself a drink. Um, but yeah, the recording part was, was not too bad. I didn't mind that part. Was the equipment that you used back then the same or did you upgrade? Um, it's all pretty much the same with the exception of I did add the mic isolation shield. If you listen to my first couple of audios, you can definitely tell I don't have one. <laughs> so I did add that. And then the only other change I've made is I recorded my first audio in my office and it was difficult because I was picking up every sign of life for a block. So I moved into the closet in my office and now things are going better. Gafferton Gaming says, who's your personal favorite character from your stories? Um, as I said, Andromeda is near and dear to my heart. I, I love how blunt she is. I love how she always says what comes into her head and I love her complexity. So yeah, I, I would say she's my favorite. Well, there you have it, folks. This was uh, really fun. <laughs> thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Um, and thank you all so much for 1000 subs. Again, uh, at the time I'm recording this, we've actually just reached 1400. So I'm just, whew, I'm very excited. This is awesome. So um, some of you might have seen my community post the other day, but I'm going to be traveling for work over the next couple of weeks. Never fear, I have weekly videos scheduled to roll out while I'm gone. In fact, when this video goes public, I will actually be on a plane. <laughs> so yeah, um, as a bit of a sneak peek, I can tell you that next Thursday's audio is going to be a bit apocalyptic in nature. I was watching my friend stream The Last of Us 2 and it put me in some kind of mood and I ended up cranking out a script. So y'all will have to let me know what you think of that. Uh, and the week after that, I have queued up the third installment of A Crew of Two, which I'm pretty excited for. You get to meet a new character. So I hope you all enjoy the audio goodness coming your way. Thank you again for this milestone and for your support. I know I've said it a lot, but it bears saying again, it means the world to me that you're all here. I appreciate you all so, so much. Alrighty, y'all. That's all for now. Be well and be good. Until next time.